Good morning, pre-cal folks. Um, I want to take a minute today to go over Unit 5, Day 2. That five turned out kind of funny. Unit 5, Day 2. Um, in Unit 5, Day 2, we're going to talk today about some logarithms. Um, I am sorry that I'm not there with you today. I'm going to actually be out the rest of the week. But I'll leave you a video on Schoology for the next few days so that we can kind of stay up to date. Um, I'll be posting some keys to worksheets also on my Schoology page, so be sure to be checking there. And then on Monday when I get back, we'll um, take some time to answer some questions and do some review and things that we need to do so that um, we can stay um, on track with where we're supposed to be in Unit 5. Okay, so on Friday we took a little while to talk about some exponential functions. The inverse of an exponential is going to be a logarithm, so that's what we're going to talk about next is our logarithms. And you may have seen a logarithm before, so when we talk about a logarithm, we start with this little word log, and then we have a base, which I'm going to call b for right now, and it's kind of a little number that's written next to the log. And then we have some kind of something that we're taking the log of, and that's going to be equal to right now what I'm going to call y. So the way we read this is the log base b of x is equal to y. Log base b of x is equal to y. So again, that's going to be an inverse. So that's going to be interchangeable with an exponential. And again, on Friday we took some time to talk a little bit about some exponentials. But the way that we're going to change back and forth is I'm going to take this little number that's written right here. And I don't mean little in value. I mean little like in font. So the way that it's written is small. So I'm going to take the little number right here, b. And that's going to also be the base of my exponential. Then I'm going to kind of flip-flop these two things, the x and the y. And I'm going to make this y right here be my exponent. So that's going to be a y. And then it's going to be equal to x. So my x and my y kind of switch places in relationship to where b is. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some logarithms and I'm going to change them into exponential form. Okay, so we don't need to solve or anything. I'm just going to take my logarithms and I'm going to change them into an exponential form. All right, so let's start with um, the log base 6 of x is equal to 2. Okay, so this will also give you kind of an idea of why we use a logarithm, so when I, or an exponential form from a logarithm. So if I'm looking at this, I don't really know what x is going to be equal to, but I could change that into exponential form by saying that 6 is my base and 2 is going to be my exponent, and that's going to be equal to x. And I'm going to leave it just like that for right now because that is my exponential form right there. But as you can see, it's a way to solve for x. So in this case, I would say that x is equal to 36. So if you're ever in a logarithm and you're stuck, try to change it into an exponential. If you're ever in an exponential and you're stuck, try to change it into a logarithm. All right, um, let's try another one. This one's kind of funny looking. I'm going to say that the log of 7 is equal to x. Okay, so I say it's kind of funny looking because it's missing a piece, and what it's missing is my base number. So you may have seen this before, but anytime you see something that's a logarithm that doesn't have a base on it, we're going to make that an implied base of 10. Okay, so anytime you see that, it's a little implied base of 10. Okay, so I'm going to change that into exponential form. So 10 is going to be my base. I'm going to have my exponent of x, and then I'm going to have that be equal to 7. Okay, let's try one more. This is another one that you may or may not have seen before, but sometimes you'll see this little notation that is an LN. Okay, and an LN is just a fancy way of writing what we call a natural log. Okay, why are the letters backwards? I don't know. But it's actually a natural log is what you're looking at there. So kind of like this one had an implied base of 10. When you're looking at a natural log, it's a log with an implied base of E. And we're going to talk a lot about E as we go through this unit. E is a special button on your calculator that has a value that's like a little bit more than 2. Okay, so E is E is just a number, um, kind of like pi is a number. E is kind of a similar thing with that. Okay, so what I'm going to do here with my exponential form is I'm going to say that I have a base of E, 
my exponent is going to be x, and it's going to be equal to 4. So again, all I was doing on that section was changing into exponential form. Okay, let's go the opposite direction here, and let's do some change to log form. Okay, so now I'm going to take my exponential form that I had over here, and I'm going to change it into a logarithm form. Okay, and again, we do this because if you're ever looking at something that is in um, exponential form and you're stuck, a good trick is to always change into logarithm form. Okay, so they're inverses of each other. So if you're ever trying to solve something and you're stuck, try changing into the other form. Okay, this one's not one that we're going to solve. 3 squared I know is equal to 9, but let's just put it into logarithm form. All right, so I'm going to say that's the log. My base of my exponential is 3, so my base of my logarithm will also be 3. And then I don't want to put the 2 with the 3 on this. I'm going to move over here and grab this 9. So I've got the log base 3 of 9 is equal to 2. So again, remember that 2 and that 9 kind of switch places in relationship to your 3. Okay, let's try another one of those. Um, let's do 2 to the x power is equal to 5. Okay, so again, I don't know what power of 2 is going to give me 5, so this is a good place to change into logarithm form because I'm in exponential and I'm kind of stuck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that that's the log. My base is going to be 2. I'm going to switch the sides with these in relationship to my 2, so I'm going to say of 5 is equal to x. And there's my logarithm form right there. Okay, let's try one more. Again, if I was going to solve, by the way, I could put this into my calculator, so that's why it's important to be able to change into that form. This is a little fuzzy. I'm sorry, my hover cam is not um, autofocusing very well today. All right, let's try this one right here. e to the y is equal to 6. And again, remember e is just a number like pi, so I could find out e to what um, exponent there is equal to 6. All right, so I'm going to start off by writing this as a logarithm. So I'm going to say this is a log with a base of e, because e is my base on my exponential, base of e of 6 is equal to y. So again, switch the place of the y and the 6 in relationship to your e. Okay, what's special about this one, though, is that I know that a log with a base of e is actually a natural log. So that's going to be the natural log of 6 is equal to y. And again, if I was trying to solve, that would be helpful because I could put the natural log of 6 into my calculator. That's a calculator button. All right, um, let's take a couple of minutes here to evaluate some logarithms. Um, there's going to be two sections. There's going to be some evaluate and there's going to be some solve. The only difference is that the evaluate has no equal sign. Okay, when we get into solve, then you'll have an equal sign that you'll be working with. But that's really the only difference here. Okay. Um, so let's start with one that looks like this. Let's start with the log base 4 of 64. And I want to know what the log base 4 of 64 is. So this might be a good um, place to get out your um, quick reference page that we made on Friday of the different powers that we have, like 2 cubed is 8 and 2 to the 4th is 16 and so on and so forth like that. This would be a good place to use that quick reference. Okay, there's a lot of different ways to work these. What I like to do is I like to actually set them equal to x. So I kind of make them into their own equation, even though it just says to evaluate. And I'm going to change it first into exponential form. So my base is 4. My exponent is x, and that's going to be equal to 64. Okay, so if you look at your quick reference page, then you'll know that 4 cubed gives me 64. So I'm going to say that x is equal to 3. Okay, so 4 to the third power gives me 64. Okay, let's try another one of those. Let's see here. Number 8, let's try the log base 5 of 25. All right, so take a minute and try the log base 5 of 25. Work it just like you did number 7 there. Okay. 
Okay, when you're ready, check your answer. Again, my base was 5, my exponent was x, and that was equal to 25, so I end up with that x is equal to 2. Okay, let's get a little harder with that. Let's find the log base 3 of 1 over 9. The log base 3 of 1 over 9. Okay, so just like the others, I'm going to go ahead and set that equal to x, and I'm going to say 3 to what power is equal to 1 over 9. Okay, so two things have happened here. First of all, I know that 3 squared is 9, but I've also changed the side of my fraction bar. So think back to Friday, and on Friday we talked about that to change the side of the fraction bar, I would have a negative exponent. So that's what I have here. My exponent in this case is going to be negative, and 3 to the second power is equal to 9. And so there's my answer right there of negative 2. Okay, um, let's try this one. Let's do the natural log of the cube root of e squared. Okay, so before I change this into anything, I'm going to rewrite everything that I have right here. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to rewrite my natural log as the log with a base of e. And then I'm also going to write my e, and I'm going to put it to a rational power. So we talked on Friday about the rational power. This is going to be my numerator, and this is going to be my denominator. So this is e to the two-thirds power. Okay. Now some people look at this as the e's kind of canceling out. I don't really love doing that because you end up with kind of an exponent hanging out up there by itself. So what I like to do instead is I like to say that go ahead and change this into exponential form. So that's going to be e to the x is equal to e to the two-thirds power. So I had a base of e, I raised it to the x power, and I set it equal to all of this. Okay, and so now I can say that if my bases are equal, then my exponents have to be equal as well. So I'm going to say that x is equal to two-thirds. Okay, let me give you one of those to try. You try this one. Let's try the log base 7 of the fourth root of 7. All right, give that one a try. See if you can evaluate that one. Okay, if you're ready, check your answer. Okay, so again, this rational power right here, this would be like all of this to the first power. So my numerator was 1, my denominator was 4. So I said 7, my base is 7, to the x power is equal to all of the 7 to the 1 fourth power. And so again, if my bases are equal, then my exponents also have to be equal. All right, grab out your Unit 5 packet for just a minute, and let's take a look at a couple that are on there. So your Unit 5 packet, and this is on worksheet number 3. And we're going to start with number 13. I'll show you what that one looks like. This is um, Unit 5, uh, worksheet 3. looks like this. Okay, so grab that out. And let's take a look first at number 13. All right, so I'm going to say that's the log base 8 of x is equal to 2. Okay, so again, I'm in logarithm form. This, I'm sorry, this gets into the solve part of it because it's set up already as an equation. There's an equal sign in this. So I'm going to start by saying that I'm in logarithm form and I'm stuck, so I'm going to change to an exponential. All right, so to change to an exponential, I'm going to take this as my base, which is 8. I'm going to switch these two things so that my exponent is going to be 2, and that's going to be equal to x. And so I can say that x is equal to 64. Okay, um, let's take a minute to look at number 14. 
So 14, we've already talked a little bit about this idea. And again, this is another good place to have out that quick reference um, list of all of your different powers, um, like 2 cubed and 2 to the 4th and 2 to the 5th and so on and so forth like that. Okay, but again, I'm in logarithm form and I'm stuck. So I'm going to change this into exponential. So I'm going to say that my base number is 2. I'm going to switch the place of these. So to the x power is equal to 1 over 32. Okay, just like the one that we did in the notes, I know that to change sides of my fraction bar, my exponent's going to have to be negative. And then I know that 2 to the fifth power gives me 32. So x is equal to negative 5. Okay, the last one I want to look at on here with you, and then you can have the rest of the time just to work, is number 17. So on 17, I've got the log base x of 16 is equal to 4. Okay, again, I'm in logarithm form, and I'm stuck, so I'm going to change into exponential form. So my base is x, my exponent is 4, and that's going to be equal to 16. Okay, so to get x by itself, I'm going to take the fourth root of both sides. So I'm going to take the fourth root of x to the fourth. And I'm going to take the fourth root of 16. And so that's going to give me x over here. And what I want to remind you about is when you take an even power, so only an even power, we have a plus or minus because we're solving. So don't forget to put in that plus or minus only on your even powers. And then I know that 2 to the 4th power is 16, so my answer is going to be plus or minus 2. Okay, so your assignment today is worksheet number 3, and it's just going to be to finish the first side. So that's going to be numbers 1 through 18. Okay, so your assignment for today is worksheet number 3, numbers 1 through 18, and I will post my key on Schoology in the folder for day two so that you can find it and check your answers as you go. Okay. All right, you can have the rest of the time to work on that in class, and y'all have a great day.